good morning good morning this sunday morning what a blessed time it is to be alive we are getting prepared i'm getting prepared for the word this morning i'm just so excited to have so many of you to support uh, abundant life and myself i am so grateful i'm so humbled that you choose on sunday mornings to spend time with me good morning i'm excited about god and all the great things he's doing come on and one thing i want you to do is like uh, our facebook page and then also share like and share there is a profound word from the lord this morning and i'm so excited to have you all to join us about five days out it'll be what the world called thanksgiving day but we know that every day is a day of thanksgiving come on let's like let's share as we get into the word of god this morning i pray that you can hear me clearly i pray that you can hear me clearly i pray that you are one waiting for a word from the lord encouragement from the lord to exalt us in the lord as brothers and sisters in christ so come on it's a little bit after 10 o'clock and we are waiting for you we are just having a time waiting as we prepare to hear a word from the lord for you and your family and your loved ones we know that this is truly the day that the lord has made and i decided that i'm going to rejoice and be glad in it i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord we'll wait for another minute and then i'll get on and teach the word of god i wish i could worship i wish i was one that can lead you in a place of worship by song but you can worship him right there from your home you can worship him wherever you are because the bible says he who worship him must worship him in spirit and in true good morning good morning to my abl family good morning to those that join us faithfully and consistently on facebook every sunday we are grateful and i personally do not take it for granted so come on like and share make sure you're sharing it with your other facebook friends because there is always an encouraging word uh, from the lord for you today so we're going to get started at this time we're going to make sure that you are able to hear the word that you're able to see me clearly as i bring forth the word of god to us from abundant life we are excited uh what god is doing on the campus this is an exciting time to be a part of the body of christ it's also a time of warning a time of rebuke a time of repentance but whatever uh state we find ourselves in that's our word this morning we're gonna learn to be content so can i just begin our, our worship this morning our sunday morning worship can i begin i will begin with just a moment of just a little bit of prayer and as we go into prayer this morning remember i am praying for you i am praying for your family i'm praying for our nation our neighborhood i'm also praying for our schools i'm praying for our students i'm praying for our young students as they are out of school for a break right now i'm praying for our middle schoolers high schoolers and college uh, students i'm just praying for our military personnel i'm praying that god will do something uh, supernatural and uncommon in our lives so let me pray and after that of course i just want to bring you a word this morning of encouragement a, a word that's going to encourage and lift you up and cause you to go to another dimension and another level in the lord let me pray for you father thank you so much for this day thank you for being our almighty all sufficient powerful majestic god lord we won't complain but we'll say thank you lord we thank you for every good and perfect gift that comes from you lord we're grateful for this time to share the word of god 
that it is a good morning. It is a blessed day. And we command this day in your hands. And Lord, you said, if you be lifted up from the earth, you will draw all men into yourself. So this morning, we as believers, we corporately lift up Jesus, who is our hope of glory, our King of kings, and our Lord of lords. This is our prayer this morning. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you again for joining us this morning as we begin to fellowship together. Amen. Via Facebook, virtual uh, live, we come to talk to you this morning from a subject that's really dear. I want to come from the book of Philippians, the book of Philippians chapter number four. And I'm only going to read one verse this morning. Philippians chapter number four and verse 11. Paul writes to the church at Philippi, and this is his writing in verse 11. Paul says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith be to be content. Let me read that again so that we can get the understanding and the meat of what the apostle Paul was saying to the church at Philippi as he began to write this letter on the missionary journey in which he found himself writing to Christians in Philippi. Verse 11 reads again, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Wow, what a word, to be content. And so I want to talk this morning. I just want to lift up a subject this morning. I want to give us food for thought this morning. Amen. Being grateful in spite of our circumstances. Hallelujah. Being grateful in spite of our circumstances. And Paul says, not that I speak in respect of wanting. He found himself in a place of being contentment. The word content, one, one definition, satisfied. How many can truly say, I'm satisfied where God has brought me to and where God has brought me through and where God is going to uh, take me to the next level and the next dimension? That is the word content. I'm satisfied with God and who I serve and whom I serve the author, the finisher of our faith. So Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, and he wrote in a very profound way. He said, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, Paul said, I am learning, I have learned, I'm in a place of peace, I'm a place of being satisfied. He said that whatsoever state, and there we can look at this and say, whatsoever state, everybody's not in a good place, as we would say. Some people are in turmoil. People have lost their income. People have lost family members and friends or somebody that they know to COVID-19. And some people have lost their businesses and there has been a downsize or people no longer can afford their homes and find themselves in transition. Some people are in a very tumultuous stage. That means that their state that they're in is not stable, it's up, it's down, it's not knowing what tomorrow will bring. And so Paul gives us a profound word. He gives us encouragement this morning that whatsoever state I'm in, he says to be content to be satisfied, but our human nature, something about our human nature, something about being even a Christian, when God bless us in one area, we're always asking God for more, give me more, I want bigger, I want better, I want faster, I want something that I can see the fruit of my labor, I, I want to see, we can have children that's in college and they're, they're graduates of Yale University, and they're doing well. We always looking for even better. Why don't they go back and get their master's, their MBA? Why don't they apply for the doctorate program? We don't understand how to just be content and to be satisfied where we are. If we have four cars in the driveway, we're always looking for the next four cars. We haven't learned 
as people and even as children of the living God how to be satisfied with what the Lord has done. And I've learned sometimes we're complaining and there's other people that's worse off than we are and we're finding things to complain about. But uh, Paul is telling us this morning from Philippians 4 and 11, his personal testimony, my God, his personal testimony is that he learned to be content. Philippians 4, chapter 4, verse 11, Paul was giving a testimony to young Timothy, the preacher that was coming up to take over from Paul. He told young Tim Timothy, he told young Timothy, hey man, you got to be content, learn to be content, whether you are base or bound, whether you have much or whether you have little, little bit, whether you have just very little, learn to be content, learn to be satisfied with what God has given unto you. That's the backdrop. That is the essence of what Philippians 4 was talking about. Also, it talked about we should never um, go in lack that God shall supply all our needs. There are some very good nuggets in Philippians 4. But I chose to talk about what Paul says this morning, that whatsoever, whatsoever, that means whatever situation, whatever circumstance that we find ourselves in, and to be real honest, we're not always in that good place, amen. We're not always in that place where we're on cloud nine and everything is going well. We have trials. To be honest, we have tribulation. But God gave us a, a profound answer. He said, and I shall give you a way of escape. How many believe that God will always give us a way of escape? We don't know when, we don't know where, but we know that our God, our God, he's going to always come through. So then point number one, point number one, let's get down to our points and get down to our teaching. Many people that are saved are being saved we should be content. Many people that are saved are being saved. Salvation. Amen. Salvation. Romans 10, 9. We have confessed in our hearts and we believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. We're born again. And so as born again believers that have a personal relationship with God, we should learn how to be content in our circumstance we should learn how to be content how to be satisfied in our salvation he saved us and not only did he save us we're now called his son and his daughters he calls us friend and he is a friend that sticks closer than any brother he is a friend that would never leave us nor will he forsake us amen so as we come from Philippians 4 and 11, he said, I don't speak in the respect of want. He said, but I'm learning. Uh, I've learned that whatsoever state I'm in to be satisfied, to be content. And as saved people, we should get in a place of contentment. One thing I've learned over the years of being saved, born again, not even being a pastor, not even being a, 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 a nothing with a title, I found out you'll never, ever be able to satisfy people. You'll never be able to satisfy family members. Even on your job, you'll never be able to satisfy your supervisors or your directors. There's always something else they want you to improve in. So we live in a world, even as saved uh, Christians and believers, we got to get content in our salvation. We got to know that God saved us for such a time as this, salvation. Amen. The title of our sermon this morning, being grateful in spite of our circumstances. What a word. Being grateful in spite of our circumstances. Everybody is not high on the cloud. Everybody have not arrived as Christian, but we are better off than we used to be. And if we keep living, we're going to be better all tomorrow than we are on the day. That's the good news of being a, a Christian, that you can always be better the next day than you were on today. Point number two, 
You and I have another opportunity. This is a big one. What a mighty God. We have another opportunity, my brothers and sisters. We have an opportunity to repent. Wow. Repent. Turn from our wicked ways. Turn from our bad behaviors. Turn from sin. Turn from falling short of the glory of God. Turn from missing the mark sometimes. And if you're on Facebook Live with me today, you can go ahead and send hearts or likes. All of us miss the mark at one time or another. We don't always get it right. But point number two, we have an opportunity. We have a chance to repent and make it right with God. And if you make it right with God, that's all that matters. If we learn to be content and be satisfied with God, come before God and ask God to forgive us of our sins, blot out our transgression, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What a word. Then God is faithful and he's just and he's righteous to forgive us of all our sins. Point number two, we had an opportunity as believers to repent. Number three, God has given each of us each other. Wow, what a gift. If we would just take time to understand that God has given each one of us to each other. We are our brother's keeper. We are of the same citizenship, which is the kingdom of God. Now, some of you may not understand there is no black. There is no white in God. We have come with divisiveness and division and caused races to be against each other. But we are a gift to each other. The sermon this morning, being grateful in spite of our situations and circumstances. Philippians 4 and 11. So we find that God has given each one of your children is a gift to you. I know you say, well, Pastor Outley, you don't understand. Your children is a gift to you. If you are married and God has given you a spouse, a husband, a wife, you are a gift to your spouse. And we should not take that at lightly or for granted. Be grateful of uh, of our circumstances be grateful in spite of our circumstances because you got to realize we're not here to stay always make good of where we are and whom god is placed in our lives god has given us friends if you got real friends not fair weather friends they up with you uh when you up but when you down you can't find nobody the song say i look high and low couldn't find nobody Nobody greater than God, that's true, but you can't find uh, sometimes, you can't find lukewarm Christians or lukewarm friends when you're going through, that's a sidebar. But you got to understand, God has given you people for your life. You don't have to go through your struggles. You don't have to go through your bad days alone. God has given you somebody somewhere with power, authority, and influence that can help you. He have given you people that can relate, people that can help, people that understand, and the blessing, people that don't judge you. Wow. Because of where you are. Because you may be down today, God have a way of lifting you up by the night. Won't he do it? God is so good and faithful that he won't leave you nor forsake you, but he will give you people. That's why I am honing in on this. God will give you people to help you. He has given us each other. And let me stop and say, I don't take people that God has given me for granted. I don't take them lightly. I don't take them as just fly by night. I take it as a honor and a blessing to have people in my life. Now, everybody, not in your life for a good reason. But the sermon says, be grateful in spite of your circumstances. And sometimes God would allow you to see who's with you and for you. And if it don't kill you, it's just going to make you better. 
because God will give you somebody that can appreciate your uniqueness, that can appreciate your corniness, that can appreciate your dry jokes, that can appreciate your, your mood swings, because they know it had not been for the Lord that's been on our side, all of us would be dead and gone or either crazy and lost it all and walking down I-85 with no clothes on. But God have graced us to put people in our lives sometimes to keep us from losing our minds and say, girl, you'll be all right. Thank God for friends like that. A man, you'll be all right. My last point that I want to leave you with is stop complaining and start praising. Philippians 4 and 11 says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state that I am. Paul is talking to the church at Philippi. He said, I learned to be content. And I didn't want to go into all the definitions and the root of the Latin, the origin, but I, it means to be satisfied. And the old school song used to say, I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I'm satisfied with him all the days of my life. You can't make me doubt him. Oh, Lord, I know too much about him. Old school used to say, I'm satisfied with Jesus all of my days. And even though that's an old school, that's an old hymn, it is still relevant today that Delta Joyce Outlet is satisfied with Jesus. And that's enough. He's been good to us. He has blessed us. 2020 has been a big, big, big uh, uh, turn of events for all of us. But when you look back, you still have all that you need in life to make it to your next journey. So I want us to stop complaining. Don't give the enemy so much power in our words. There's death and life in the power of our tongues. Use that tongue to praise God and learn to say things may not be what I want them to be, but thank God they're not what they could be. I'm content. I'm satisfied. Learn to be satisfied. Learn to be content. Learn to bless the Lord. And everybody don't bless the Lord the same. But every Christian, every believer ought to have a praise. Amen. Every Christian ought to have a testimony. Every Christian ought to be able to say the journey that the Lord has brought us on have not been always easy, but thank God he didn't bring me this far to leave me. And I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. And nobody told me, hallelujah, that the road would be easy, but I just don't believe he brought me this far just to leave us. Amen. So I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know that in about five days, the world will celebrate what we call uh, Thanksgiving. Turkeys are being killed and cooked, baked, and the trimmings. And the ham is being prepared and trimmed, and the pineapples are on it. The collards and, and, and all the turnips and the dressing is being prepared for your family. But I want to lean in and say something. What if you don't make it to Thursday? What if the Lord see fit to take you home before Thursday? Would the Lord be able to say to you and me, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now I'm going to make you ruler over many we're trying to put the cock before the horse. Be content today. Look around and see what the Lord has done. If you have a job, if you have income, hallelujah. If you have health and strength, if your family members are still with you, and even some of us have buried family members, God have graced us to even get through or he's gracing us to get through the grieving process and the mourning process and, and the place of love. And God shall never leave us in all of this. So in five days, I know you're excited about eating and fellowshipping 
and just hearing and seeing your family members, even if not in person, you FaceTime them or however you're going to fellowship with them on Thursday. Just remember, we got to be grateful in spite of our circumstances. And Paul gave us an awesome lesson, an awesome teaching this morning. And I've done my best to try to deliver it to you the way he gave it to me. Stop complaining and start praising. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. Paul says, I'm not talking about what I want. God have a way of uh, giving us what we want. I'm a witness. But then God have a way of giving us the desires of our hearts. That's biblical. But at the same time, whether you live in a project or whether you live in a palace, God is with people in the project just like he's with people that live in a palace. We serve a God that's not a respect of person. And we love to say, won't he do it? Oh, he's doing it right now. I'm not going to wait until I get to heaven to shout glory. And I hope you're not going to wait to get to heaven to shout glory because God is doing it. He's doing the Ephesians 320 right now. He's doing the exceeding abundantly of what you can ask or think. God is supplying your every need. God is making ways out of no way. He is a way maker, a miracle worker. That is who he is. So I want to bless y'all this morning. Just saying, be encouraged. Don't get weary in well-doing. Don't you faint. Don't you quit. Don't throw in the tower. And this is what the Holy Ghost just dropped in my spirit. Stop looking at somebody else's yard. Because the grass does look greener on the other side. I got neighbors that's been living in the neighborhood months and, and, and maybe uh, nine months or a year before I have. Of course their grass going to look better than mine. I got new grass. The parable or the point I'm trying to make. Stop looking at what somebody else have and start fertilizing where you are. Bloom where you're planted. And watch God do the supernatural. And you won't even remember those days of struggle. Because the struggle, I want to announce to each of us, the struggle is over. Or you're going to have challenges. You're going to have the days where you don't know how things are going to work out. But God says in Jeremiah 29 that he's going to give all of us an expected end. And our latter days shall be greater than our former days. I want to bless you all with such a word of encouragement. The title of our sermon this morning, being grateful in spite of our circumstances. God bless you. Have a wonderful Thursday. But I learned a long time ago, and I'm not that young, and I'm not that old. I'm counting the middle now, y'all. But I learned that every day is a day of thanksgiving. And the song say you got to learn to glorify the Lord today. Because then the song went on to say he keeps on blessing me over and over again. So every day is a good day. Learn how to praise him in the midst of your storm. Learn how to praise him in the midst of your struggle. And if you're doing well, learn how to praise him in the good days. Because your good days are going to go to bad days at some point. And then you won't complain because the Lord has been good to each and every one of us. Bless you on this Sunday, this Sunday morning. Some of you will be off next week. Some of your children will be home with you all week long. Learn to embrace and love who God has placed in your life because they may be here today, but they're not promised to be here tonight. Learn to hug a little more. Give them a little kiss on the jaw. Be, be loving and kind toward each other. And whatever you do, keep your atmosphere. Keep your environment positive. Don't bring any negative drama or don't bring any toxicity. That's a new word I just made up, by the way. Don't bring anything toxic in your environment because God wants us to bless him at all times. 
abundant life. I see some of my friends joining us. Some of you I know, some I don't. But if you're here today, it's not by chance, it's not by accident that God have a word for each one of us. Those of us that's being saved, thank God for salvation. Number two, you and I have another opportunity to repent. It is so hard for us to say, I'm sorry. It is so hard for us to say, I repent. I got it wrong. But it starts by just opening your mouth saying, I missed the mark. Lord, I messed up. I didn't do everything right today. And so now I'm going to repent. Number three, he has given each other. He has given us each other as a gift. You are my gift, whether you believe it or not, and I am your gift. We all give to each other, and we don't have to wait to December the 25th to say, open our gifts. We're here for each other. We're supportive of each other. We love each other unconditionally, non-judgmental. So you are a gift to somebody, and somebody is a gift to you. And the last point that I made in my sermon, my teaching, my words of encouragement this morning Stop complaining and start praising because we serve a good, mighty, profound, powerful, forgiving, long-suffering, God of peace type of God. And if you don't believe me, try Jesus. I tried him. And one thing that I know, he's all right. He's on time. He's blessing each one of us right now. And I don't want to leave this teaching this morning by assuming that you are born again. Family members are born again. You have an opportunity to give your life to Christ. You have an opportunity to confess your sins. And he's faithful and just to forgive us. You have an opportunity to let go and let God. And God will direct your steps, your path. A good man's steps are ordered by the Lord. Number two, if you backslid and you need to get back to God, oh, I love him because he says he's married to the backslider. He, he, he don't turn his back on us. He give us another opportunity to come back to him, not back to the church, not back to a pastor, not back to an apostle or bishop, but back to him where we need to be. There's safety in the arms of Jesus Christ. And thirdly, if you don't have a church family, you don't have a church home. You don't have a pastor that you're accountable to. This is an hour that you need to find a church family of your own choice. You need to find a pastor that you can relate to and they can relate to you. They know you and they love you unconditionally. You're in a safe place when you worship with them, when you come into the fellowship, the local congregation. All of these are important things. And then, I'm going to say something that most pastors don't say. You need to forgive folk so you can move on and get all that God has for you. That was a profound, fresh one. You and I need to forgive folk so we can move on and get all that God has for us. God bless you. I love you with the love of Christ. And I should never, ever leave a live uh, Facebook without praying for you. So at this time, I'm going to take a few moments to lean in and say it's time that we pray. Not that we play, but that we pray. And if we ever needed prayer, it's right now. I don't know what you need and you don't know what I need, but all of us, I promise you, we need something. Man can't do it. Man or woman cannot make you content, your job, your careers, your bank account, who you know, who you hooked up with. Only God can do this. So let us pray. Our Father, our God, our Lord and our King, I come before you asking that you would hear me, that you would hear us, that you would make ways for us, that you would cause us to be content that you would bless us coming in and going out. Father God, that you would cover us as never before. And even as we pray today, Father, forgive us of all our sins. 
Lord, the big sins, the list sin, all sins are sin. And Lord, help us to do better the very next time. Lord, we ask that you would cover us, cover our minds. Lord, cover us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet because we don't know what we need, but you are all knowing God. Cover our children, Father. Cover our grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews. Cover, Lord, in the blood of Jesus, our siblings right now because you know what they need better than what we know. Cover our marriages, Lord, because you are the head of that marriage. You are the head of every marriage. Cover us single people right now. Only you can do it, Father, because we learn to be content. And if we're not content, help us, Lord, to do better in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we're not worried because worry is not of you. But we cast all our cares on you right now, Lord, because you care for us. And we thank you, Father, that you are doing great things in all of our lives. But help us to be patient and wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Help us not to be so quick to complain, but be quick to give you the praise. Help us not to look to the left or to the right, bless your name. But help us, God, to look to the author, the finisher of our faith right now. Because you are the only one that can help us in times like this, God. So we thank you for your answers, a yes and amen. We thank you right now that you're building us up in our most holy faith, which is of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for what we don't know, Lord. You already know. You've already fixed it. You already made the cricket places straight right now. Now, Lord, we thank you for our families. We even thank you for our enemies right now. We thank you for every hater that's building anything against us because what the devil meant for bad, oh God, you're meaning it for our good. We thank you for every testimony. We thank you for every praise report. Then we thank you for every seed that is sown in good ground. That is going to reap a harvest, a hundredfold return, not next year, but right now, God. And I thank you for spending precious time with your people. I thank you right now for ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. We are the church. And upon this rock, you will build your church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Thank you, Lord, for saving a wretch like me, saving a sinner like me. And putting me in the right relationship and the right posture with you. And for that, I thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. And Lord, I thank you for this time we have spent together. This is our prayer. This is our supplication. This is our request. And we made it known unto you. So now, God, you are able to subdue and keep all things until the day of your return. I thank you, Lord, for this prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray on this day. Amen. Why don't you go ahead and shoot an amen to me, a hand clap or some hearts. Amen. Some thumbs up. And you don't have to end right here. You can like and share and share and share because somebody somewhere, they need this word. And when you said amen, that means it settles it. It is done. You can put a lid on it. It's a done deal. We love you. We want you to have a blessed Thanksgiving day. Be careful and be safe. Thank you again. We'll see you next Sunday morning. We will be Facebook Live from our campus, Abundant Life. We'll be in the glory of the Lord as we meet in person next Sunday at the 10 o'clock hour. I love you and I appreciate you so much. Thank God for the healing. Thank God for the freedom. And thank God for his mercy and his grace. Y'all have a blessed day. I love you.